vehicle's alternator outputs direct current, or DC, to power the electrical systems and maintain and recharge the vehicle battery. An alternator is aptly named because it generates an alternating current, or AC, which is, in turn, converted to DC. We can divide the alternator into two different systems, mechanical and electrical. On the electrical side, you have the components that are responsible for generating and managing the electrical current, which include the rotor, stator, regulator, and rectifier. The rotor and stator are the main components that generate electricity based on fundamental electromagnetic principles. The regulator is what controls the output of the alternator, and the rectifier is what converts AC to DC. When an alternator is working properly, alternating current is being generated by the rotor and stator, the rectifier is converting it to direct current, and the regulator is controlling the output. If a problem develops with one of these, the result is either no voltage, too much voltage, or an AC voltage output. On the mechanical side, you have the bearings that support the rotor and the pulley that's driven by the belt. If the bearings are bad, they're loose or noisy. Pulleys used to be fixed chunks of metal, but now we're seeing overriding alternator pulleys or overriding alternator decouplers. When these go bad, they're often noisy or they may not spin the alternator. The brushes are another mechanical part of the alternator. They're made of conductive materials that physically contact and rub against the slip rings, which is how the electrical current from the regulator flows into the rotor. In the good old days, a technician could take apart the alternator and check the various components, determine what was bad, and replace only what was needed. But alternators have been self-contained for many years now, and regulators are built in. So taking apart the alternator isn't really an option anymore. If an alternator isn't working, it needs to be replaced. Basically, the only parts that can be replaced are the pulleys. And that brings us to the topic of warranty returns. When it comes to starter and alternator returns, false failures are fairly common. In a lot of these cases, misdiagnosis is the culprit. Often, an alternator isn't working properly because of poor electrical connections in the charging circuit. Loose or corroded connections in the back of the unit can increase resistance and restrict the current flowing through the circuit. So can broken or frayed wires inside a connector or the alternator wiring harness. That's why your professional customers need to test those connections by performing voltage drop checks whenever they're installing a replacement alternator. For parts specialists, a bench tester can verify that starters and alternators are functioning properly when they go on the shelf and off the shelf. Here's the bottom line. When a customer wants to return a new alternator, don't assume that they got a lemon. The real problem could be battery connection corrosion, a bad cable, a worn belt, a burnt fuse, or something else. Bench testers might not be a cure-all for alternator returns, but they are a good troubleshooting tool. Thanks for watching.